start to taste things. Let's just go ahead and pretend like I'm starting it with this sword right here, which of course you can't do. Hey everyone, Fran Capitanelli here, totally into the sound. As you can see, we're going to battle today. What's he, got there? What's he doing with that thing? I want to talk about this song, Nights on Broadway, by the Bee Gees. I put it on my album, Totally Into the Sound for the Bee Gees, Tits for the Bee Gees. And uh, of course I love it, because I'm not going to spend uh, time working on a song that I don't love. But as I'm doing this record and I'm trying to figure out what songs to do, I had this handy little Bee Gees uh, songbook that's got just about every song that I did and a ton of songs that I didn't do, but I was able to kind of just go to each one and, uh, you know, pick its brain. So I go to, to uh, Nights on Broadway, and I'm like, you know, you're trying to find their thing first. Ah, here we are, in a room full of strangers. Robin's part. I had to follow you, though you did not want me to. I can't sing that high. But that won't stop me loving you. I can't stay away. Blame it at all. So right there. Blame it at all. That's the, si the signature sound of the Bee Gees. That falsetto. And they don't find it until this song. Um, they've got hits leading up to this point, uh, but it wasn't until they found that signature sound that they started banging, banging out the hits. Um, and once they found it, it was in every song. And it's basically, as the producer, Reef Martin, is saying to Barry, can, you know, can you do some ad lib and riffing on the end and do some kind of scream or something? And he finds this other register in his voice, and then it, it just opens up a whole new world for them. It's almost like a different career is starting, uh, even though they have the same band name. Um, so... I'm thinking about this song and I'm thinking about this album and I know that I need to find a signature sound for this record, for this band. I know that it's important. I learned about the whole concept of the signature sound from Roy Thomas Baker, who produced all the early Queen albums and the Cars, and of course he did Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, my old band, Tom Collins, we got uh, linked up with him. He was supposed to produce us. And of course it didn't happen because only, you know, 5% of anything that anybody says is gonna happen in the music industry actually happens. But we did go to dinner with him and we did meet up with him uh, at some mansion in the Hollywood Hills and I had a dozen phone calls with him. Fran, it's RTB. Um, and so we're listening to our songs with him and he's like, you know, your songs are good, but they're not great. Go off, run off and write some hits. And you also need to find a signature sound, um, which we were like, Ugh, we've got a signature sound. It's Led Zeppelin. Um, no, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, you gotta find your own signature sound. So thinking about all that and of course you don't want to force it but it needs to be given some thought and um, I'm working on this song Nights on Broadway but you know just do, I've got two songs I got Night Fever and Nights on Broadway and they're both about night but I don't really associate this song with nighttime I associate it with knights in shining armor thus the sword um, then I remember, okay, well, the, you know, maybe I'm putting it together like that because the Bee Gees 
have an album where they're wearing, you know, night costumes. <laughs> it's called Cucumber Castle. And as you can see, we're missing a guy. We're missing one of the brothers. It's Robin. He's not here. I guess he was a little smarter than him, you know. I'm not dressing up like that. Um, but, you know, they got, the, the brothers got into a, an argument, and as brothers do, and he went off and did his thing. These guys went and kept the Bee Gees going and did this thing. Luckily, they got back together and, you know, had a stellar career, but... They were not without their missteps, obviously. I mean, if you look a little bit in disarray here, you can see Morris, he's holding some kind of a, a black jello here, which I guess was popular back then. And Barry is not even awake. He's got his eyes closed and he's holding a cucumber, um, which I can't imagine he was happy about when he saw the artwork. He was like, you didn't even get the picture of me where I was awake, I was asleep holding the cucumber. And then of course on the back cover, they're inside Cucumber Castle. And uh, you know, they gotta fill the void of, of Robin not being there with the dog, bring the dog into the shot because it looks kind of empty without the third guy. Um, so, I'm going to work on the song, and I need a kind of a galloping horse feel, and so I'm thinking... <laughs> So, you want to fill it out a little bit, and I'm thinking Thin Lizzy, something like, you know, they were... So that's working. It works with, with the vocals. Um, so I got the first part. So I need the second part. I had to follow you. Um... But you did not want me to. I'm not really sure what the, they're talking about. I mean, this is before social media. So, but I, I'm thinking about horses and, you know, what better horse song than The Trooper? You can see the video in my head, Iron Maiden, The Trooper. They got the horses. So I need something that sounds as badass as that, or close. Cool. I got the second part, pre-chorus. I need the chorus now. So I start thinking about castles and um, I remember this, one of the scariest moments of my life was uh, well, I was playing for Butch Walker with the Black Widows and we were in Birmingham, England uh, playing a festival opening for Pink. And right by the festival grounds was this castle that was like, 8,000 years old or more um, and of course she couldn't go inside of it it was all hollowed out there's like no furniture or anything but uh, you know they didn't want a bunch of rocker guys in there smoking cigarettes and so it's basically you looked at the outside of it but after we played our show and we were all feeling uh, saucy we snuck in to this castle and we're going up a spiral staircase made of stone. And I put in the song Black Sabbath on my phone in my jacket pocket. And, you know, we're in, basically in pitch black, except for what our iPhones are lighting. And I've got... That's playing in my jacket pocket. And we were all just like, <laughs> running as fast as we could. 
up these stairs or trying to get out of the place. I mean, I've never been more scared or felt of something <laughs> around around me that uh, a presence. So I need a part like that to go into the chorus. So I found this. So, um, Try and get the horses Winnie in there. Um, so that worked. It worked with the vocals. And uh, I've got, you know, most of the song now. First, pre-chorus, chorus. Now I just need the bridge, which is, you know, that I will wait even if it takes a lifetime. So I'm thinking about like a, you know, some kind of battle scene. So that sounds like heads are being chopped off and stuff. Um, and then I got another maiden part, Thin Lizzy Maiden, whichever. Harmonies. Um, and then the solo. But I still haven't found the signature sound. And uh, so my buddy, Rory Kilcullen, who helped me figure out so many things with the, uh, the engineering side of this. Whenever I pressed a button and I was like, okay, I think I just dumped the whole album, everything is gone. He would come over and rescue me. And he lent me some gear. And one of the things he lent me was this vocoder, which I don't really play keyboards, but you know, it's not a Billy Joel record. I just need to have something on there and it ends up that this vocoder is one of the signature sounds. So I'm thinking about the movie Excalibur, which I love that movie, and they have this chant that summons the dragon. Um, I don't want to use their chant, so I just kind of riff at the end of this song and have like a little vocoder solo. I mean, how much fun is this? I was, what I set out to do was have fun playing music and I'm having a blast. <laughs> 